giving you a voice, and making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First updates now, FRC is produced in partnership with the Blue Alliance. Keep up to date on all live and archive first robotics events and team stats at thebluealliance.com. And by viewers like you. We need your help to keep fun at loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Hey everybody, uh, welcome to Roast and Robots. This is First Updates Now interview show where we get to take a step back, relax with some amazing people in the community over a delicious beverage in your favorite mug. Um, I'm your host, Christina Tia from Play All Day and Team 125, The Neutrons. Our producer for tonight's show is the amazing Tyler Olds, who is also doing Robot in Three Days down in the great state of New Jersey. So on tonight's episode, we will be discussing Destination Deep Space. Um, with some amazing guests from the Compass Alliance tuning in from around the world. So to introduce our first guest from the Great White North, he's a mentor and a first alumni from the always epic Team 1241 Theory 6, we have Karoosh. So welcome, Karoosh. And beside me, we have the lead mentor and drive coach from the Neutrons, an alumni of FRC Team 11, the Mertz, and the Mertz. cheesecake aficionado, we have Mr. Mm. Brandon Holly. The king of cheesecake. King of cheesecake. Delicious. Chief of cheesecake. Yeah. Chief cheesecake. Chief cheesecake. I'll take that one. That's a good one. Yeah. Good alliteration. And um, last but not least, um, we have the product of an epic team with one of the most Einstein appearances. Um, she's one of the lead programming mentors on our current team, but is a former operator and lead programmer slash student slash now alumni of FRC Team 1678. Please welcome the amazing Kelly. Hey, guys. And we got two fantastic individuals uh, next to me as well, Christine. I just want to make sure we uh, intro in yeah. for that. So we got uh, Ben Martin uh, right over here from 225 Tech Fire. And then uh, we also have Griffin uh, Delagrate from Nemesis, who are uh, part of the RA3D Team Capital. So we're delighted to have them on air and on stream with us as well. Epic. Can't wait to see how things continue to go for them. So if you're watching live, we do have a gift for tonight's show from my Etsy shop, Wordplay All Day. And it is appropriate. at some point may show it on your screen um and he can tell you a little bit more about the other wonderful giveaway we have right tyler yeah and i apologize because we're having some audio issues with our full screen but uh the other thing we're going to be giving away from uh team 1740s we do have the pair of bat hawks uh which are absolutely phenomenal if you haven't had an opportunity to check those out you plug them right into your battery i know tech fire you guys have some uh behind as well plug in your battery tells you what the voltage is so if you plan on being competition ready and even more importantly playoff ready make sure you check out the bat hawks at antimarket.com and if you're interested in winning these giveaways will be giving away near the end of uh, the show uh, so all you have to do is uh, click that little follow button up on the screen or if you'd like to subscribe like uh, we were just getting a few in there Andy Sam just resubscribing for us you'll get 5x chance to win we'll have a keyword you need to type in in the chat near the end of the show so good luck to everybody and enjoy the show as we talk about destination D space D space yeah so I think we're ready to just dive on into this so what I would love to hear is everybody's first initial reaction. So a lot of, or all of us here are actually alumni of first and everybody's had a pretty good um, experience so far of a variety of different games. And this year's game is like no other between, you know, the game animation, the theme completely different from last year's game. So let's see, Karush, why don't you start us off? What is your initial reaction to this year's game? I was just happy to have a symmetrical field and uh, also, um, I do think the, the auto uh, change is uh, really cool, like the sandstorm effect. Um, and the best thing about that is I feel like it's in line with their recent game changes to make things more friendly for lower level teams, people that would might struggle to do auto. So I think it's a, it's a great change. It's similar to like how they are always doing like kind of like two game pieces or two ways to score at least. It, it helps a lot of teams differentiate themselves and specialize. 
Yeah, I'm really excited to see how that plays out. So, Kelly, I know that you're a huge fan of Autonomous, and you were desperately hoping for an endgame Autonomous. So what were your initial thoughts, reactions, feelings about this year's game? I, I agree with Karush that the whole Sandstorm aspect is something that's going to be really unique to this year's game, especially based on how uh, you have the ability to both um, drive pre-programmed routines or you can have your driver actually operate your robot um, during that first 15 seconds. I also think that the end game this year is also um, kind of building off of that idea of make, still making things easier for uh, more rookie teams. in this year's end game, I think. Yeah, absolutely. So let's take it down to New Jersey. So Ben and Tyler and company, what are you guys thinking after seeing this game reveal? I don't know. You want to start, Tyler? You want to get, no, get you, your take, go, you know, go ahead, Ben. I'll, really? I'll go after you guys are done. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, I, I mean, when I initially saw it, I, you know, thought this is actually pretty easy compared to some, either, some prior games that we've had here. Uh, I think that there's a lot of uh, similar elements to what we've seen in past games. So there's a lot of known quantities um, in terms of, um, you know, how to get things done. So that makes it a little bit easier for us on our end, too, that we can showcase a lot of these uh, through the build. Then you look into it a little deeper, and then you start seeing some of the defense stuff that's changed. Um, and then so, you know, whether you have over-the-bumper intakes versus not and that sort of thing. And then so there's a lot more details to the rules just in slightly different ways than we've seen in the past. So that's kind of intriguing. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, one of the things we noticed first off, and he hinted it in the game reveal video, was that the big change to how defense works. Um, yeah, the rules about when you're allowed to extend outside your frame perimeter um, and uh, however many people are allowed to be defending at once is, is really different than we've had in the past, so that was exciting. Also, the new game piece. The uh, the discs are something we haven't seen in a long time, so we're excited to use this. Yeah, really. What's the last time we had uh, something similar to that? I mean, other than Frisbee's, maybe 1999 with the floppies? <laughs> I mean, well, you weren't even born there, man, so... <laughs> But, but, but yeah, uh, but something like that, you know, looking, it, it's been a long time. And those are even like, they were called floppies, right? Mm -hmm. So they're floppies. So uh, I think the game piece is cool. I think it kind of brings the best of both worlds, right? We have the uh, uh, the cargo, and then we have, uh, what's the other, what's the floppy piece called? Yeah, uh, oh, man. Yeah, cargo. You're hatch. Uh, hatch. No yeah, 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 that's yeah. right. Yeah. Okay. See, we're yeah. still learning, <laughs> too, guys. But uh, so I, I think those are interesting game pieces. And I'm going to look at this from a, a perspective of, if I don't know what this is and I'm coming in, what do I think of something like this? And if you look at, you know, the, the ship that's on there, I think aesthetically this is a pretty pleasing field, right? Uh, I think there might be a little bit of uh, viewer obstruction in regards to seeing uh, near side some of those ships being scored on potentially. But if you're looking down on this field, I think overall it has a cool look to it. And I, and I think uh, there's a lot of excitement that can go out along with something like this as well. And, I, and if, if I put myself in the shoes of a student, I think this, this this game is pretty kick-ass. Like, if I was a student and I saw this, I'd be like, wow, this is absolutely incredible, personally. Yeah, I would agree. So, Brandon, from the perspective of somebody who runs events, has to set up and take down the field, and also is a drive coach, what are your thoughts about the game? Uh, yeah, a lot of thoughts. Um, the auto thing, my first reaction to the Sandstorm was, wow, it's going to be really uh, different not knowing what the outcome of auto was as a whole on the field um as it's happening and having to react to you know many variables that have changed um quickly so that's that's going to be different obviously for drivers but um for drive coaches for sure that's something new and different so uh, obviously i'm keyed in on that um i mean I, I agree with tyler i think the field looks looks really cool uh there's a lot of uh, obviously a lot of work went into the aesthetics of it and um, you know, the reports seem like it, it wasn't too bad to, to put together. So um, hopefully uh, that's true. And uh, if that is true, um, we'll, uh, it looks like it'll be a good, uh, a good game as far as uh, people enjoying how it looks and, and all that stuff. Um, I do have, you know, some reservations about how exciting it might be. You mm -hmm. know, I think first reactions, those people totally outside the tent um, probably looks cool and is satisfying. Those people that are inside the tent that have seen a few games, it may be on the more slow side. Uh, I, I wonder, you know, obviously every game's exciting for all of us, you know, who are deep in FRC, but, um, you know, place, pick and place games have had that reputation before. And yeah. um, this may end up being that type of thing. So uh, that's my only reservation, you know, at first glance. 
Hey, hey, I want to get people's input on the end game specifically, actually, as they come up, because this is something that, uh, you know, all you have to do is drive up on something, but there's a bit of a challenge for that. So, uh, Christine, I'm going to throw that at you. What, how do you feel about this end game that, that we have here? What's the end game again? <laughs> <laughs> there's, well, I'll answer. Um, yeah. <laughs> the, that big step is super gnarly. Anybody oh, yeah. who's been who's been in FRC for a long time probably mm -hmm. looked at that and said, "Wow, that is a uh, unique challenge." Um, the as, biggest the, step. as the capital guys, I got to figure out how they got that name too. Uh, uh, why you guys named yourself? Uh, the sure. Guys. Yeah, I can help with that. The uh, we're called uh, First Capital R3D because we're in York, Pennsylvania. Which local branding? They love being called the uh, you know the first capital of the United States. So it's a little bit of insider. Uh, it. Inside baseball there for everybody about why why we're named that. I know it means nothing to first people. It means great locally. So you know you can, you can look at it that way. Yeah. Gotta please the people. Yeah, but, we got but, multiple audiences here. Um, what you guys alluded to with the rules being different and stuff like that, with, combined with the unique end game, I think it is it will create some unique stuff. Um, things we haven't seen before. A uh, step that large is uh, is a new challenge for us. So. Um, I'm excited to see you know see how that plays out. It's pretty uh, pretty unique. Mm. We did talk about it at the start of the match on our team. Uh, there's going to be a lot of full sends off of those steps. So <laughs> yeah. So do you guys think that going like going on to the six inch step like from level one to level two is more difficult than just hanging solo last year? Like how would you compare the two? Yeah. I, I would say that it is because I think that a lot of people figured out a really quick, easy way to, to hang individually last year. I think the big challenge last year was obviously getting all of your alliance partners up and not being, you know, yourself on the platform. And there were very few teams that could do that successfully. But I don't know, for me last year, I was just kind of bored by the end of last season because the end game could have been like it looked so epic and like by the end of a limbs, like it wasn't a huge game changer. Like climbing the rope in 2017 made her, you know, completely break a, a match or even, you know, a, an elimination match. But now, you know, last year the, the end game was like, eh, you already knew who won, you know, before the end game even happened. So I'm hoping that this year the end game is really a, not as heavy as 2017, like some happy medium ground between 2017 and 2018. But I think it'll be um, a bit more difficult than last year's, you know, end game of just hanging individually. And there were a lot of like we saw a lot of unique approaches to it in New England alone, like, you know, teams that were able to stay out of the way. So, you know, their alliance partners could get on if if each team could only hang individually. So I don't know. I think it'll be interesting to see how teams work together to or design around the idea of working together. So Kelly, what are your thoughts on that? I was just thinking back to almost like in 2016 and the parallels between 2016 and 2018, the same idea of climbing on that bar. I think this year um, with the ability to kind of almost mix and match um, where the robots are climbing to get that final ranking point, I think it'll open up a lot of end game strategies because you can have, if you have two robots that can do the single climb or whatever they of weighted value of these different obstacles obviously designing towards last year's end game of like you know hanging going to be a lot different than this year's end game of like these massive platform steps yeah um i think our did our audio die there somebody said our audio died but um go ahead griffin you want to take that yeah uh, comparing this game's end game to last year at first glance uh, to me it looks like it's less valuable when you look at the the total amount of points that are at play at the game but this year, uh, they threw in the extra uh, ranking point um, just that's dependent on how many points you score, not necessarily having to get all three robots off the ground. So if you're able to build a robot that can get up to the highest level, all you need is one of your alliance partners to park on the, uh, the lowest tier. Um, that represents a big change to me. Um, 
And uh, as, as far as that's weighted to, with the rest of the game, um, I, I, I do think it, it's a little different. Uh, ben? Yeah, I think it's a little bit like uh, like last year where it's, you know, climbing with two ver- or climbing with one versus climbing with two, where um, it, it's it's in like go- going on the single step is like the, the single climb, right? Because, uh, you know, if you can get two people who do it and someone who parks up there, then you, you can get the RP that way. Then the nice thing that I think a lot of um, a lot of teams might pursue the, the big step. Um, almost because c- you know, as the as the game continues to scale up, there's going to be more um, at the higher levels of play. There's going to be more people who can go on that tall step. Um, so what you'll tend to see, I think, is um, there are a lot of teams that might pursue the top step just exclusively, just to, for those levels of play where you might not have a robot that makes it back. Um, and, you know, so as a, a just in case type thing. So Kirsch, um, there's uh, somebody yeah. in, in chat asking for your opinion on this, so you better step in. Oh okay. <laughs> on the uh, on the climbing. Yeah, let's talk about let's talk about end game and climbing and that sort of thing. Yeah, I just think it's interesting because one of the things that's going to happen. Well, I don't think it's going to be very likely, but I'm curious to see if you're ever going to like exhaust all the scoring opportunities with the hatches and the um, what are they called? The balls, whatever. Um, yeah. So potentially, like, it, it would take like maybe at the like, Um, and then getting to the highest point is like critical to be able to get more points than your opposing alliance. Yeah, I would agree. So when we're thinking about kind of this, like, I mean, obviously, like, our, I think the experience that you guys have had as, as students, like a lot of alumni, you've gone through all these different processes of breaking down the game um, and you've worked with other teams or now you're on other teams where they do it in a different way. But if we're kind of, talking to you know rookie teams or new students or even those like you know middle of the pack teams and you know both 1241 and 125 and and tech fire and nemesis we're all from district teams where you know we we see a lot of middle of the pack for robots because they do get a lot of experience with the unbag time and then they go to two events what advice would you have for those teams that you know like consistently perform each each year but don't quite make it beyond say like quarterfinals or you know they're they're, an, they're a solid alliance pick, but you know, individually, what advice would you give these teams when they're kind of approaching how to dissect the game? So, Brandon, why don't we start with you? What, do you, what are your thoughts on that? Um, you know, whenever there's multiple game pieces on the field, um, I, there's just a technical um, you know, weight that comes along with that. So if you, if you want to deal with both of those game pieces, um, it's either a longer development cycle because you're trying to make one thing that does multiple um, pieces, or if it's two things that each do a, a, a piece uh, and it requires more effort. So um, focus is important. And um, and when I think about that, uh, there's some really kind of interesting robot options that come to mind. Like, um, do we see uh, experts um, in the hatch covers um, that you know go in the beginning of the match and they load up hatch covers all over the place, which clears the way for cargo loaders? Um, and then they run back to the hat and uh, and try to do some climb stuff um, in that, that way. That could be a really interesting robot type, and they would never interact with cargo in that in that sense. So um, focus is important. I definitely think um, teams should work on specializing uh, on on things, and uh, and that's how you're going to fit into an alliance really well. I could see a really good you know uh, hat uh, cover specialist and art specialist being a very strong pairing. Versus two um, hybrid. You know, robots. In addition to specializing on game pieces, I would also say that don't like undervalue defense, especially because this year you can only have one defender, but it's basically unprotected once you're there, except for the hab. But like when when a team is scoring, obviously you can't tip them or anything, but you can like bump into them as much as you want. Yeah, definitely. Tyler, do you have any um, good questions from the chat that we can bring up real quick? Yeah, I think so. I'm going to bring Heather in here, who's been. Uh... Uh, recording some of our questions. I had to come in here a little bit. And let's read off a, maybe read off a couple that we can uh, take for the chat room. So, awesome. Okay. Um, nice and loud. <laughs> what are your thoughts on having a maximum amount of points that can score, like in Relic Recovery for FTC? So they're asking if there's a max. If there is a maximum. 
uh, on having a maximum. I'm oh. having a maximum. Well, Ben, why don't, there, you, why don't you maximum. take that then? Oh, um, you know, I think um, the, the most important thing is you make sure that – you score a lot of points really, really fast. Um, you know, that's that's going to be that. And that it's kind of like any other FRC game is, you know, focus on your cycle times. Make sure that, you know, sometimes it's more important to score, especially with this this game where last year's game you almost, like, if you were any team, you almost really wanted to just do the scale no matter what because if you lost the scale, you lost. Yep. Yeah, so. Yeah. But, but this year, you know, if you, when you actually get to whether you win or lose the event, it's, very much, uh, you know, there's going to be people RP hunting to get the top level of the um, the the rocket and get that top step just because they're RP hunting and those are the hard things there. When you've got how many other scoring locations? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, sixteen other potential locations that you've got to like plug with both hatches and such. So you know, you want to. You, you want to score fast, and score low is probably the easiest way to do that. So going on to the um, scoring limit, do we think that uh, basically um, uh, top-tier alliances like at Worlds are going to hit the uh, limit for hatches and uh, cargo? Because I personally think it's going to be very rare. It might be the case, but I don't think it will happen consistently at all. Yeah, I think you if you go back and just do you know the we're all we all become historians here in FRC. If you go back and you just look at what cycle pick and place type looked like as far as top end robots, um, you go back to gears. You know the very very top end was doing eight gears. Um, you've got to score. You know to do a, a, a rocket. You know by yourself. Um, you've got to score a, a lot of game pieces. Um, so you're talking yeah you know twelve whatever um, cycles. Um, Potentially, so that's uh, that's a lot of work. I'd be surprised to see uh, a maxed out score. I would also absolutely not undervalue the role that defense is going to play at the higher levels as well. I think as you as we go up and we see teams cycle faster and get more aggressive with their scoring, we're going to see a lot more aggressive defense as well, trying to shut that down and cut those cycle times down to be as slow as possible. Yeah, that's something uh, a lot of people, yourself included, Kelly, knew firsthand in 2016. Uh, yeah. Defense made the difference at the championship. Um, that's what, what the difference maker was. So let's take yeah. one more question. Um, I, we're not going to have time to get everybody's questions. I apologize about that. I will ask for all the hosts if we can try to keep answers short uh, so we can get through as many as possible. So let's go through one more. Do you think uh, multiple three level level three climbs are viable? Uh, you want to take that, Griffin? Could, do you uh, think there's – is there going to be an option to have – uh, three robots up on the on the top platform for twelve points. Can we see a thirty six point uh, end game? Uh, I think it's gonna be would be hard to get more than one. I'm not sure what the legality is. Yeah, on either, I thought though. there I thought there was a, a graphic that says don't do that. Yeah, that, that's that's what we <laughs> yeah. were seeing here. Does, does anybody know anybody yeah. else that's in the in Skype call with us? Our our understanding is that it is possible right now. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I was gonna say we're also under the assumption that it's allowed. Okay. Um, it, it, it's a lot of work. I mean, I think 2590 guys, you guys probably know, uh, super well. It's a lot of work to, to do something like that. And you've got to, you've got to look at what the, the gain is. Mm -hmm. Um, it's not a ranking point situation because that if you're up top, just a low bot or a low platform bot will get you the ranking point, not necessarily to do it there. So you're, if it's a mid-range bot or a mid-level bot um, that you're boosting up to a upper range bot, it's a six-point swing. Is it worth it to take on that techno, you know, technical difficulty? That's a great for six point. points. Yeah. It's a it's a tough one to to make the call for, but um, will we see it? I, I think we might see it, uh, a few teams try to do it. But let, let's take one more question. And let's move on uh, from chat. Uh, at District Champs and World of Limbs, will it be much place for specialist bots, or will do everything bots dominate as usual? Mm. Um, I, I'd like to comment on that one. So I think there there is kind of a unique dynamic here because um, if you go back to the most recent game with you know multiple game pieces, fuel and gears, there are two completely separate games that are be were being played at the same time. This year. Um, the pieces interact with each other. You have to put the hatches on before you put the cargo in, uh, at least on on the um, on the rockets, obviously, and the cargo ship. So, um, I do think the specialists have to be spotless uh, in 
that it may be uh, one of the few times where uh, the really high-end robots that do both things can actually be matched by two specialist robots, you know, accomplishing uh, this task because of that. So, uh, I don't know. I'm excited to see it. Yeah. Yeah. I would just say for like specializing as like a average or lower level robot, I feel like um, doing the hatches really well is more important because you have to do those first. Because yeah. typically you would like you would want to leave the most reliable like uh, team like the scoring for the end of the match. So you would uh, typically I, I don't know like let the uh, third robot or uh, second and third robots put the hatches on, and then um, your top robot will go and do the balls really quickly. Mm-hmm. So Kelly, what do you think? I know you've only been in districts for a year, but what do, what do you see happening? Well, I can actually speak a little bit of this going back to 2015 because I think that was the last game where we had more than one game element that actually had to interact with one another. And um, in that year, the recycling containers act as multipliers for um, the number of totes that you had underneath. And I think you see a similar kind of issue here where especially on the rockets, depending on the number of hatches that you have placed, um, if you only have one hatch, there's still a chance that the cargo that you place can still fall out. So I think you're going to see that same dynamic of, yeah, maybe just like in 2015, you could stack super fast, but if you didn't have a recycling container on top, then what was kind of the point of that besides like you would get significantly more points with the recycling container. I think here, even if you have a really fast hatch bot, um, you still are going to have to have someone to come by and fill all of those back up with cargo. Otherwise, I think you'll run into an issue where especially you won't be able to complete that rocket ship. Um, and you won't be able to get that RP. So even if you are doing hatches quickly, um, I think you're still going to need that cargo, especially during quals, to get that extra RP. Mm. And what was your favorite part of 2015 again? How far did your team make it that year? <laughs> Not that far. <laughs> Not that far. I, I didn't think so. Bring up sore yeah. subjects there, Christine. <laughs> Her team won chance that year. <laughs> My team lost yeah. to them, so yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Oh, yeah. Your team beat our team, though. Yeah. It's true. But we did rip somebody's arm off in the process, right? Yeah. That was a good time. <laughs> All right. So real quick, um, I would love to talk, and I know Tyler probably has a lot of uh, feedback on this, but I would really love to talk about just the overall broadcast today that first presented. It was different than any other year for kickoff, and I think that now that you know they've established themselves on Twitch, we see a lot of um, you know shows happening and things that they're planning on doing. Um, but I think the overall quality of the broadcast – definitely improved and it had i mean obviously they integrated the theme a little bit but what what was everybody's thoughts i guess on today's broadcast tyler what were your thoughts on it so we're going to talk about the broadcast in particular i know other people want me to comment on uh, a couple new things first is introduced but let's talk about the broadcast to start out with um mm-hmm. i liked it overall um i like kind of the hybrid of doing the uh the the live uh, at some point and then kind of mixing in the uh uh, the the offline segments or the produced segments that they had, I thought overall was very well produced. I mean, I'm I'm a big fan of DJ Knight. I think he's fantastic, and I, I think he's a great uh, face for first, right? And I and I think he is really what puts a lot of this over the top. Now, first uh, has been getting some great benefit. Not only are they getting uh, a lot of uh, people obviously from first watching, but they've been getting a lot of front page from Twitch as well too. So it's really being spread out to the world for things, and that's that's really what first needs is to have this like aspect where so many more people can can experience something like this, right? It, if you look at Dean's vision and what he wants this to be, that that's what it's really about. And so from the broadcast itself, I thought it was great. Um, like any first broadcast, they tease you for about two hours before they show you something for five minutes, and I would still like to get away from that a little bit. Um, and uh, just like us, a few technical difficulties, but past that, I think the broadcast was, was, was pretty good. And I will comment about the other things a little bit later on too. Yeah, definitely. Um, Karish, what were your thoughts on today's broadcast? I don't want to say like this. I don't want this to be demeaning, but it was like actually really good. That was my reaction. Like it would <laughs> typically like right? I want to like typically it's just kind of you overlook it. You wait for the um, re- uh, the reveal kickoff, whatever, and then everything around it you don't want to watch. But this was like it, it was it was honestly really good. I did think it was really funny that everybody else's so except for Dean's speech, everything could be in the time, like the countdown, but just to be safe, they just like put Dean's speech and like, we're not even gonna time this. Like we can't, we can't predict how long it's gonna be. 
So the human rain delay. Like, okay, the launch is on hold because Dean's about to speak. I thought that was Yeah, that was spot hilarious. On. Absolutely. <laughs> Kelly, what were your thoughts? I know you've experienced a handful of kickoffs now. Uh, I definitely think the hardest part for me was after watching the video, I immediately wanted to know more about the scoring and specifically the rules and waiting to get through all the game, um, the field videos and everything before getting the code to actually look at the game manual um, was was a little tedious. I think the videos were definitely helpful and they definitely kind of started to put things in perspective, but I still had too many unanswered questions from just the game animation itself to be able to like fully appreciate those field um, videos at that point in time. But then when they were replaying them later, it definitely started to make a lot more sense having, having read the game manual at that point in time. Yeah. Yeah. I will say it was really weird that they left out like a lot of the like portion of the game um, from the animation. Like yeah, I didn't put the extra RP, right? Yeah, the, yeah. I was gonna yeah. say like I didn't want to say it because I was worried I missed it somehow. But like, yeah, they yeah. didn't put that in there, which was huge. I was so confused. I was like, what? Where's the? Where are the other ones? Yeah, and I know from our standpoint, like, so the Neutrons host a remote kickoff every year, and typically we're used to like you know building the field ahead of time, and then immediately after the the game release, like everybody floods out of their the rooms that they're in, and they go check out the the like mock field that we have so that was like thinking back like that was definitely a huge change overall for us like everybody was still in the rooms like they were actually sitting and watching these videos and i think they've done personally i think they've done a great job with the field tours like even last year's like going through all the different elements um for teams that may not be able to interact with even a you know remote kickoff field or weren't in new hampshire when you were allowed to go on to the field and check it out um, I think they've done a really good job of dissecting, you know, showing the different um, ways that you interact with each component of the field. So, Brendan, what were your thoughts on this year's broadcast? Yeah, I mean, I, it's funny, like, I, uh, I've been through a bunch of kickoffs, you know, over my years in first. And, you know, they did a really good job getting people hyped up. You know, I, even all our mentors and everyone uh, who's done been through it before and seen a lot of stuff over the years... I think a lot of people were pretty hyped, you know, for the the final countdown and all that stuff. Um, so I I thought it was a really well done thing. Um, overall, it was uh, just the right amount of time. I think maybe a little bit on the long side, but it didn't drag on for very long. There was yeah. some kickoffs of, of old years that went on for a long time, um, and I I really appreciated the the aspect of um, of highlighting everyone at HQ. You know, I mm-hmm. I do think that um, we tend as a group to take for granted, you know, a lot of what the, the people there are doing. Um, so the fact that, you know, they went through and they talked, you know, you know in, a, in a colorful way, uh, all the functions of uh, the FRC staff and what they mm-hmm. had to do to pull it was, uh, was a cool way to do that too. So yeah, uh, I, I liked it. Yeah. And like on that note, I thought that it was really cool that they, I mean, it, it's nice that you get to finally see like some of the, the faces to the names that you know, may email every now and then for like, you know, if you're a, a volunteer coordinator, like you email Fiona and Amanda, if you're, you know, trying to get help, you email Jamie and you don't necessarily see the faces to these people. So I, I agree with Brandon. I thought that was really cool. And yeah. some of the comment, they were like, does everybody have a headset there? I was like, <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe they do this year. Just you know, how they roll. <laughs> all headsets and said, you know, you're ready to launch. But um, Ben and uh, Griffin, what were your, your thoughts before we kind of move on? Yeah, um, I thought the broadcast went really well. Um, I know looking back to past years, um, and uh, maybe it was like uh, the, f- the first kickoff I attended was back in 2012. I remember it dragging on forever. Uh, I, th- I feel like it's gotten shorter. Maybe that's just time. Um, oh, um, even compared to last year, um, through the uh, kind of extended animation they had, I kind of had a hard time following along with what was going on. Uh, but this year, I feel like if you tuned in at any point, you kind of would have would have understood what, what was happening. Um, so I, I appreciated the way they did it. Mm. Yeah, um, I, I think that uh, I really love the produced kickoffs. Uh, glad they keep doing them. Hope they keep doing them. Um, I think it keeps it very controlled, and we know how long it's going to last, and we can get to the game. So it's great. Awesome. Um, and. I think, Tyler, are we going to let people know what our secret secret giveaway phrase is? 
Yeah, and I, and I think what we're going to do, um, just because of, of the way we are on time, um, and we do, we are going to do an RA3D show after this and check in with uh, Team First Capital here in just mm-hmm. a little bit. Uh, so let's do one of the giveaways now, and we'll do another one in about a half hour or so. So, um, Christine, why don't we start out with the uh, wordplay all day uh, giveaway. Do you mind describing it since I'm having problems going to full screen? Yeah, so if you go to wordplay all day, or you go to Etsy.com backslash shop backslash wordplay all day, um, you can see there is an awesome Mae Jemison uh, drawing that I did and turned it into a sticker. Um, seemed appropriate for today's giveaway since Destination Deep Space happens in outer space. You so you can win one of those fantastic stickers. And maybe I'll send you something extra as well. So, Christine, um, give, me a, give me a keyword. What do we want everybody uh, to type? I think we're going to do Yay Tyler. So, Y A Y Tyler. Tyler's been busting his ass over there. <laughs> yeah, be, being you know, present with uh, with Tyler here, he does you know bust his ass constantly to uh, to make, get you these shows. So that's you know, true. Everyone should go subscribe on Patreon. <laughs> yeah, you should definitely subscribe. And I'm gonna yeah. say something just to you know get it out there. I know that first announced that they're gonna be doing a lot of different shows, and a lot of them really parallel the things that Tyler and the first updates now crew have been working on for a long, long time. And I'm sure people that are watching right now have seen the incredible growth that first updates now has had over the last you know year or so and that's all tyler busting his ass tyler got married this year and somehow managed to like coordinate all these different shows that were going on you know he's always completely dedicated to figuring out what can make you know these shows better and better for you guys the viewers so even though you know first is gonna be doing their robot reveals and that's fine but first updates now i can guarantee is still gonna be kicking ass and taking names and running their shows as well so you know Feel free to tune in first, but at the same time, continue to support First Updates Now and everything that Tyler and the rest of the people that volunteer their time and energy and passion um, into these things. You know, give him the support that he needs. He may not be mentoring a team anymore, but you know, this is his child. Um, <laughs> I'm always blown away by the amount of you know time and effort he puts into it. So, Tyler, you're the best. Thanks, Christine. And, and I, I'll give a quick comment. And by the way, uh, just host, I don't know who it is. Uh, please make sure you're not typing unless you're muted. Always it comes off on screen really loud. Um, so uh, I, I appreciate everything you said on that. And, you know, it's true. First Updates Now is something that, you know, we've, we've all busted our backs for a lot. And I do pour a lot of effort into it. And uh, here's what I have to say in regards to that. So first in general, it's first program. They can do whatever they want, right, for things. And, and really the realisticness is, is that we need to have – more in order to make the pie bigger right uh you know for from a show's perspective we need more and more awareness in what first is if you look at what both fun does and what even first does for a lot of things we're only hitting you know about five to ten percent of the first population the people who are super dedicated you who are watching love this stuff right but there's so many more that we need to uh to, to reach out to and so that's i'm excited for that in regards to first i think first has a better ability to reach those who are not super engaged. Now, am I completely happy that first has come out um, on, on something that we've been doing for years and years to start with Mike and Justin and just said, Hey, we're doing this. Uh, we know first updates now does it, but we're not going to talk to him ahead of time or anything like that. Personally, I think it's, uh, I'm not very happy about that overall, but you know, first is going to do what first does. And it's a little disheartening to know that first doesn't give a crap about what we do because of something like that. And, you know, it, it, when my feelings a little bit hurt? Yeah, a little bit hurt for that. It would have been nice to have a heads up or something like that. Um, in regards to other things, uh, like I said, the pie has to be built in order to have us all do it. So we need that. We need to keep making the audience bigger and bigger and bitter, bigger in order to have us reach these people in the first place. So I'm happy that First is doing what they're doing. Uh, direct copying things. Uh, it's not like, you know, we're the only people who've ever done a reveal video night for things, but we are the ones who have been doing it for First. So I hope when the time comes for it, I'm going to be straight up. Let's boycott that BS thing and come do it on premiere night here because we want to feature you guys on teams that actually care about you and teams that we're going to tell it how it is, both the good and the bad of things, none of this propaganda stuff. So with that said, I appreciate all of you who watch First Updates now. We can't wait to keep making great content for you throughout the season. I agree with that completely. I'll be here on a reveal night. Maybe we'll get a a video in this year. And like I, said, like I said, I'm not saying to go out and yell at first for things, but on the other hand, it would be nice to have something in check for that too. So, Yeah, I would agree. Um, let's well, let's take, um, if we don't mind, I know we got a ton of, ton of questions, so let's see if we can grab at least one more from Heather here. Yeah. Uh, do you think it will be necessary for robots to pick up hash plates from the ground? 
It'll be necessary mm. to pick up hatch plates from the ground. What does everybody think? Anybody want to jump in? Yeah, I just think of like what 2013 when you know a lot of a lot of teams didn't pick up frisbees off the ground. And I don't know, like I I don't know if that ended up being super duper important, but I think this year it will be to save on like cycle time. But I also um, don't spend a lot I of would, time. That, so I would say even going back to 2017, you saw teams that could only take gears from the human player station and then would drop said gear when attempting to mm. score the gear on the peg. Um, and since similar to that year, there's a limited number of hash plates, albeit more, um, that you can spare. I think, especially those first couple of weeks, people are going to miss putting hash plates on. There's going to be teams that miss. Mm. So, Yeah, I, I hope it's common, but I don't think it will be. Yeah. What do you think, Brendan? Yeah, I'm not, I, I don't know how critical it is um, compared to you know, previous years. Like, uh, gears, you know, in 2017, if you dropped a gear right next to a peg and you couldn't pick it up off the ground, you had to go all the way across the field again to get another one. Um, yeah. It's not as far a trip this year, which, you know, technically means it shouldn't be as critical of a mistake, but at the same mm-hmm. time, um, efficiency is going to be the name of the game here, as you know, doing things as fast as possible. And if you can uh, do a quick cycle off a off one on the ground and grab one or two of those a match, it may be enough to get you over the edge where you can uh, get close to a, you know, a full rocket RP or something like that. So, I would also yeah. say that in 2017, dropping the gears also meant that you could just go to another peg if you needed to score. Here, with if you drop the hash, pl- the hash plates, and it's for some reason blocking that scoring area, like you can't exactly go and score somewhere else because eventually you're going to need to score there. Yeah, we talked about uh, here for First Capital uh, whether or not we thought having a ground pickup was going to be necessary. Um, I, I don't think anyone mm. thinks it's going to be necessary in order to play this game. Um, but we, you know, we brought up 2013, we brought up 2017. Um, robots played both of those games very well without having ground pickups. That being said, we thought those that had ground pickups did better. Um, so we think just like in, in both of those years, having a ground pickup is going to be an advantage. Well, I would challenge that that in 2017 having like loading your gear directly to the human player station was faster uh yeah yeah. well yeah yeah Mm -hmm. like uh i i don't think we we don't disagree with that here and we've been talking about that that it's uh certainly a lot quicker just to face plant the wall grab the you know grab uh the hash plate and run and score it so it's it could very well be faster here yeah time will tell all right, Tyler, do you want to pick a winner for yeah. us? Let's go ahead and do that. So uh, if you type in yay, Tyler, it feels weird saying that. Uh, type hey, in yay, Tyler. Tyler uh, well, we're going to do that drawing for the Mae Jemison sticker. And we'll be going to be giving away the Bad Hawks in a little bit as well, too. It won't be at the end of the RA3D, uh, by the way. So make sure you stick around because we're going to be checking with the RA3D team, showing you their amazing progress they've had so far and some really cool concepts. So if you want to talk more robot strategy, that's going to be for you. Uh, with that said, our winner for tonight is going to be B-D-A-R-O-Z. Uh, subscriber, thank you very much, by the way, and congratulations for winning. Please make sure you shoot first updates now, a private message uh, in chat uh, with your mailing address so we can get that out to you. And, Christine, thanks a lot to Wordplay All Day. Uh, guys, if you haven't, check that out, by the way. It is a, it is literally a, a FRC Fanatics paradise. It's like, I mean, the, I tried my best towel. If you haven't seen that, it is one of the coolest things ever, so make sure you check that out. Yeah, we now feature um, some I Tried My Best FTC stickers. There's district-specific I Tried My Best banners popping up. I still got to add PNW in um, Ontario and some other districts. But more stuff is added. New socks added today for Destination Deep Space and some stickers coming into the shop this week. I love seeing all the rigged emojis. All right. Um, and one last thing before we go. Um, so all of us here tonight that joined that weren't with Tyler um, are all part of the Compass Alliance so if your team is looking for, you know, some awesome resources on how to develop even bigger and better skill sets, looking for where to find the nearest, you know, practice field um, or machine shop or 3D printing, or looking for an immediate answer when it's, you know, 2 a.m. or 3 a.m. wherever you are, head over to the compassalliance.org and that is your one-stop shop for all things first robotics competition. You don't have to dig through the first inspires website. You don't have to figure out how to navigate the new Chief Delphi. It is all there. 
waiting for you with a 24 hour chat system and so many experienced teams that have failed so many times that they've figured out the right way to do things. So head on over to the compassalliance.org. Our teams are all working nonstop to continuously update that and make it better and better and better for everybody in the first community. And we're excited to, you know, provide some more stuff and keep an eye out for something really cool. That's going to be happening on Monday. Yep. That's all we can say about that big secret. Our hair is full of secrets right now. So Thank you to everybody that tuned in. Thank you, Tyler, so much for all the work that you do and having us all on. Um, thank you to our guests, Karoosh, coming from the Great White North in Canada, even though it looks like the Brooklyn Bridge is behind you right now. Um, Kelly, who just wanna... landed from... Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, you're in New York. Um, Kelly, who just landed from Davis, California, in Boston today to be here for kickoff. Um, and Brandon... Thank you, everybody, for being here. Thank you, Ben and Griffin. I hope you guys are, you know, fueling yourselves with food and other things while you're doing robot in three days. Um, so, yeah, I hope everybody has a great season, and I hope you continue to turn into, you know, Roast and Robots, along with all the other amazing, fun shows that will be happening this season. So, and I think somebody was looking for the URL. I don't know if it was for the Compass Alliance, but it's the compassalliance.org is uh, where you should go. Even if that wasn't the URL you were looking for, that is worth <laughs> Just go there regardless. Just go. Yeah. Yep. And by the yep. way, we did uh, re-roll, Christine, because uh, Person 1 has already won that from you, so they oh. said we can re-roll it. So uh, Poke Gamer nice. 2 has won the giveaway, so make sure you PM me Gamer. if you like nice. us. Congratulations I hope they, on that. I hope they put Pokemon game in the Charizard. Switch. Charizard? <laughs> Charizard. Uh, so if you're watching, by the way, uh, stick around for just a, a couple minutes. We're going to switch over to our R3D team, check out what they're doing, and then be giving away the Bat Hawks as well. So, uh, Christine, thank you, by the way, for all the contributions you do in making this show happen. Can't wait to do more stuff with you in the 2019 season. Yeah, Happy New Year, everybody. <laughs> all right, everybody, we're going to be switching over. With that said, we'll talk to you next time on First Updates Now. See you then. We need your help to keep fun at Loud, Live, and Independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe.